Japanese concert pianist Noriko Ogawa mm -hmm. came to the public's attention when she won the third prize at the International Leeds Piano Competition in 1987. And since then she's played all around the world and developed a very impressive career. She enjoys playing contemporary music and has a real interest in charity work and music education. So I'm delighted that she's joined me here today at the Fazioli Room at Jack Samuel Pianos in London. Oh, thank you. It's great to be talking to you. You too. And I'd just like to start by talking about your music education and how you started playing piano. How old were you and what was the catalyst? Do you come from a musical family? Well, yes and no. Um, my, my father is not musical at all, right. whereas my mother is a piano teacher. So, well, since before I was born, she was teaching. So I, I must have been listening to her teach when I was in her stomach. <laughs> but in any case, that, um, when... Um, when I was a baby, she would, she used to teach an, an upright piano, and my mother tells me that uh, when I was a toddler, I used to sit at the corner of, of this upright piano listening to all the piano lessons. Gosh. So when I was about two already, I was very, very enthusiastic about piano. Yeah. And uh, if dinner time, if I say, mommy, piano, both my parents went, oh dear, not again. <laughs> so they had to hold my back because I could fall off the piano stool. So I was really that keen there. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, I started um, proper piano lessons when I was four and a half. Right. Um, my aunt saw me playing at the keyboard and at the piano all the time. And my mother was very busy because I have a younger sister. And, um, but then my aunt said, come on, sister, you, sh you have to take your daughter to the piano lessons. Yes. And that's how it all started. So which teacher do you think was most crucial in your development as a pianist? Which one kind of influenced you the most, do you think? Well, very, well, right from the beginning, everybody was very, very important. Of course, my mother was such a, an influence, big influence for mm. me, really. I mean, yeah. she was always making sure that I, was, I practiced every day. So in a way, I had to tutor at home. And uh, of course, Mrs. Kuroda, who really taught me how to use each finger, she was very important. All the teachers, yes, and then I studied with uh, Madame Iguchi, who was you know, the, one of the yes. best known mm -hmm. piano teachers in Japan. But probably I would say the biggest influence I would say now that I had is from Benjamin Kaplan, who was in London. Yes. Um, he, very unfortunately, he passed away recently, but um, he was the biggest influence. He was the teacher that I found by myself, and uh, for me, uh, I would not be here in London without him. So I would say, really. So what, how old were you when you came to London to study then? I was already fully grown up. I was <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a Juilliard student when I came across Benjamin Kaplan. Okay. And he was visiting New York. And I was a very typical, frustrated student then. <laughs> Rather cynical. Because yes. I would go to competitions. And I always do OK, but never really, really well. because. Mm -hmm. I was a very frustrated student, not getting what I wanted. So I was not able to have any kind of magical click with anybody at the Juilliard. Right. Because music education is a very personal thing. Yes. And I needed to have someone that I could fully trust musically. Mm -hmm. And uh, a friend of mine in New York said, why don't you play for Ben Kaplan, who was visiting New York? Not for a very long time, but uh, you know, he might be able to spare an hour or two for you. So I went along to, to a flat where he was staying, and then I played to him. And I have to say, it was musical love at first sight. And then I knew I found somebody I was looking for. And it was really well worth it for yeah. me to go all the way to New York, spending years being a frustrated student, just to meet this piano teacher. He was, he was the right one for me. And um, so he found me some scholarship in London. And I came here absolutely penniless. And, um, and uh, I had lessons as many times as I wanted. And um, suddenly, all the doors opened, and starting from the Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think, then, is the difference between learning a piano in Japan and learning here in the UK? Do you think there's a tremendous difference, or do you think it's quite similar in the approach? Well, um, I have to say that um, the stages of my life were so different. I was a child and I was a, I was a teenager when I was in, 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 in Japan. And then when I came to London, I was a grown up person. So I cannot actually compare in a very simple way. 
but um, what I would say is that in Japan um, we are we are always well it is actually the basic thing of Japanese society you do what you're told to do and here you have to find what you have to do yes. and both easy and not easy both good and bad I mean I'm, I shouldn't say good or bad but uh, um, for Japanese children it could be very demanding to be given too many opportunities to think right. right from the beginning because we are born into a society where you do what you're told and suddenly if you are um, free then it's, it could be a bit too much pressure in a, yes. in a very strange way I see so. yes so um, for Japanese children like I uh, I was it is good to have some kind of frame up to some I don't know during formative years I would say right. and then up to um, after maybe, maybe teenager time it would be fantastic to have a kind of education that um, British music world can offer mm. um, free to think choose what you want to play repertoire go and find what you like to do and uh, explore all kinds of possibilities. Yes. It's really too much for Japanese children, I think. I, I don't want to sound a bit too chauvinistic about it, no, but it's, it's just a reality, I think, because I am one of them. Yeah, sure. But this kind of freedom and uh, endless opportunity that we've got in this British music world is really absolutely fantastic. It, it's, it's like a, it's like a honeymoon really for, for every musician. That's good to hear. Mm. How did you develop your technique? Um, I started um, piano lessons with rather Japanese old school, very, very uh, strict and you have to be aware of each finger mm. of your both hands yeah. and uh, making sure that they are very independent. So that sort of thing I developed in Japan, definitely. But um, when I was about 12, 13, um, I remember my friends and my friend's mothers used to say Noriko's sound is very pretty but it sounds like uh, very muted as if she has got the wind accord that down all the time <laughs> and and uh, but then I, when I was a child I didn't really worry about that I was in a way chuffed that they thought that I made nice sound and that's that's what I wanted to hear mm -hmm. really but then when I was 13 14 I started to notice that maybe it might not be enough maybe i should project a little bit more mm. then i came across a, 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 a pianist um, who was very active in performing at that time uh, mr hironaka and he told me how to relax the, the, the body and arms yes. and how to use this kind of power from here to there using the weight of the uh, arms and I remember when I was about 16, I think I was practicing, and then suddenly a penny dropped, really. And then I thought, this is the way to use my body. And then suddenly I started to project a lot. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. So I had all these kind of guidance um, by different teachers, mm -hmm. but suddenly when I was about 16, it all added up, and then it suddenly came to my body. It, it, it was like a magical moment. Very difficult to explain because it's a very physical thing. Yes, and personal thing as well in a way. And you, you won this uh, third prize at the Leeds. How did it change your career? It must have changed it tremendously. Oh yes, overnight. Yes. Overnight. Yes. I wouldn't be here without it. Right. Um, I had lessons with Ben almost every other day up until the Leeds. And then I went there and, and when I went there I just wanted to play to the British audience. That's all I wanted to do. And then I just went further and further, and then I thought, my goodness, what am I going to do now? <laughs> and uh, and then I was in the finals, and I, I I didn't even tell my parents that because I, it was really just so much for me. And then I came third, and I was absolutely over the moon. Yes. Then overnight, I had an agent in Japan. And then um, I made some phone calls to British agents, and at that time, the, the, the leads was so exposed mm, yes. that um, I had an agent in the UK overnight as well. So the day before I was a student pianist and the day after I was a professional pianist. 
and uh, the okay. change was very big. Yeah. So do you feel competitions are still very important? There's a lot of debate amongst pianists whether they can still launch you in, in the way that you were launched. Do you think they're still very powerful? Well, for pianists without any connection, important connection, useful connections, yes, it is. Yeah. I, ha I come from Japan, I went to Juilliard and I was a frustrated student and then I came here just as a student competitor studying with Ben Kaplan and very, very personal. I was not exposed to any agent, promoters, conductors, orchestras, nothing. Right. All I wanted to do was to play well each round. Yeah. Then I needed to get some kind of prize or I needed to have some kind of connection through the competition. So I needed it. Um, young pianists who are exposed to a lot more things, for example, born in this country, if they know the BBC since they are children, if they know right producers, right piano teacher who knows a lot about agencies, then those pianists might not need them. But I did, yes. And you were really interested in contemporary music. How did this come about? Well, um, when I was a child, um, I read biographies about Beethoven, Mozart, and Schubert. Those three books my parents gave me at one Christmas. And I read from cover to cover so many times. And yet I thought they were mythological. Coming from Japan, completely different yes, yes, society. I just did not think they existed. Yeah. So for me, still a part of me tells me that those people might not have existed. It's some kind of gift from somewhere. So um, for me, it is very important to meet composers in flesh that actually human being who only has got one heart, two eyes, two hands, actually write that kind of music. And for us to materialize or realize the, those pieces, it's still for me, it's something beyond comprehend. I cannot quite Still today, I cannot really quite come to terms with it. So it is important for me to keep doing it. It is a good fun. Yes, and yes. it is, I, I, I'm sure you know, Melanie, it is the most scary moment oh, yes. to play. <laughs> so to echo, yes, to compose. <laughs> and then I can only play about 50% of what I practice. <laughs> Usually the first time, you know, I, I, I just trip over everywhere. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I could play a bit better in my studio, I always say, but uh, it is a nerve-wracking place. And it's a fantastic thing at, at the same time. Yes. And then also, not only the, um, they, they ask us what we, you know, they want us to do the process, also they discover what we can do yes. and what we cannot do, realistically speaking. Piano only has got this much keyboard and our hands are this size. And uh, it is a fantastic um, moment to walk towards each other. So, although it is a hard thing to do, it is a good thing to do. Yes. So that's why I keep doing it. And you play a lot of takamitsu to critical acclaim. You've been really, um, well, really thank praised you. for your, your wonderful performances. What, what is it then that draws you to his style? His well, I was a, well, simple really. Um, when I started um, going for international piano competitions, um, it says in semi-finals, play a piece from your own country, right. contemporary, blah, blah, written in, blah, blah. So, so um, it started that way. I needed to find some kind of repertoire for yeah. my country. And then I was talking to a friend who was a composer uh, student. And then he said, well, why don't you play Takemizu? These pieces are very, very pretty, very musical, very beautiful, da, 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 da. But then when I started playing, I thought, well, actually, uh, because Takemizu was a lot of film music, I felt quite close to it. I must have heard his pieces without knowing it was by Takemitsu. And then um, I really so enjoyed it. But then, um, until I actually met Takemitsu, I wasn't looking for his music um, that much because I was, I was so busy with all these other Beethoven and Chopin to go to competitions. And then I met Takemitsu, what a lovely man. And so un unassuming, but then dreamy at the same time. I thought I would really like to play a bit more pieces by right, him. Yes. So I did. And then there were some moments which were just so magical, so heavenly, and it really touched my heart. So I wrote him a fan letter. And then he wrote me back. And that encouraged me even further. So this kind of personal touch gave me very extra enthusiasm 
to, to get to into school. these music, yes. So that's, that's right. how it came about, different, different stages. stages. Yeah. Well, I heard you recently play with your duo partner, Catherine Stott, and so it was a BBC Radio 3 broadcast, and you played um, The Circuit by Graham Fitkin, and it was absolutely thrilling. It was Thank magical. You. So do you enjoy playing chamber music, or would you rather be a soloist? Or do you like well, both? I do, I do enjoy playing chamber music but it is a lot of responsibility. Mm. I find chamber music most demanding. So I do enjoy it, but I am not a full-time chamber musician. It's really too much responsibility to carry. Yeah, and I find solo recitals, of course, in one way it is difficult because I have to present what I am and who I am. Yes. On the other hand, if it goes well, fantastic. But if it doesn't go well in <laughs> places, it's okay, I take all the blame to myself, and, and that's fine. Yeah. But um, if I cause a problem in chamber music concert, I cannot quite recover from it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, mm. yes, yes. So, but then working with Cathy is a fantastic yeah. um, thing. She's a wonderful musician and such generous personality. She's got such a big heart, and I have learned so much from her about being a pianist, about being a musician, traveling musician, how to work with other musicians, a lot of things. So um, she's so busy and so am I. So um, we don't meet as often as we want to. Yes. But every time we work together, we have a great time. Yes. And you produce a beautiful tonal range, tonal palette. How did, you, how did you come about producing this sound? Is it something that's developed over the years? Or um, have you always been aware that you could make these well, I am a strong believer of beautiful sound at the piano. If we are not worried about the quality of sound, why do we worry about playing on big concert brand or, you know, big maker, yes, uh, you know, yes. the brand of the piano? And, uh, why are we so worked up about the quality? It's because we want to make good sound. Yes. So I am a strong believer of that. Um, so I must have developed because of that that I have some kind of sound somewhere in my mind that I am always looking for it, that I am always looking for that kind of sound so that I am trying to, 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 to produce that kind of sound at the keyboard when right. I do it. And also, um, not only just hearing it, but physically, um, I want to get a lot of pleasure out of playing the piano. When we, when I hands are really into the keyboard, yeah. we know it, yeah. yes? And, and I'm always looking for that kind of moment. And this is a kind of absolute meeting point between the piano and the pianist. So uh, because we have to perform on different instruments all the time, um, you know, it's like our first meeting. Yes. And we say hello, and then I, I sit down, and then I start playing, and the piano says, oh really? <laughs> and then I say yes, it's it's really. And then, <laughs> so I have got a, some kind of image in my mind, what kind of sound I want with my head, and my hands are looking for this physical um, pleasure mm. from this particular instrument. So my hands want to to convince the instrument. So when the sound and the piano, this physical, I don't know what it is, click happen. Then the piano shakes hands with me, and 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 I love that moment. So yeah. so that that probably is the, the way that I work, and that gives me a lot of um, how can I say that this kind of sound world that it, yeah, yeah I, that I want to swim around. swim around. Yes. So the piano tells me the capacity of that instrument while I'm rehearsing, and then with the with the acoustic of the of the hall. And then I know how far I can go. Yeah. In the concert, I go even further. And if the piano is a good piano, and and uh, if if this piano can take what I want to do, then it travels with me as far as I want. Wow. So that's that's the kind of image that I have. I have. It's kind of map that I have. Mm -hmm. But it's always it's blank when I go to a concert hall. And it actually, it could work with much smaller pianos sometimes. Um, 
that that that's, that goes with outreach and things like that. You know, the, it, because if I go somewhere, then the piano is inevitably smaller than the concert ground. Yes. But I can still swim around in that kind of world. But if the piano is big and full size, if the concert ground is really huge, and the acoustic is good, then I think I have this sound image and map that I start drawing. And is this why you enjoy playing Debussy so much? Because you've recorded, you've done a huge recording of Debussy's works recently. And is this what attracts you to his music? Exactly. Tonal, tonal exactly. Possibilities. Exactly, yes. yes. Um, Debussy's sound, actually, a lot of people think that Debussy's sound is wish washy. It's not. Mm. And um, uh, he, it's not all the time, but he has got really great big forte, fortissimo, fortissimo, as well as very quiet sounds that sometimes I have to take so much risk and actually playing quietly is more difficult. Yes. <laughs> because Especially on instruments you don't know. Exactly. <laughs> and then sometimes the bumper sounds yes. <laughs> louder than the piano sort of you know the the, the notes. Yeah. Then it's a it's a very difficult moment, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> um, and, and uh, Debussy challenges it both ways. Yes. And uh, when it works, it's fantastic. And also the colours that he, he demands, it's, it's, um, it's wonderful when it works. So yes, that's, that's probably why that I love the music. Yeah. So I know you're very interested in outreach work, charity work, you've done a lot of this. So how, how did this come about? Well, since I was a child, I was always interested in this sort of thing. And um, um, first of all, um, I visit primary schools right. mainly. Uh, when it comes to schools, and then I actually go to students hall, and I, I insist on playing on the instrument which lives there, even if it's not right, uh, and because I want to show the children when I play it, when a professional pianist plays on it, it sounds different, and they love it. Um, so that's one thing, and then uh, I always insist on showing my hands. So if children are too many, I. I tell them to change the seats, or I ask the piano to go around, right. so that I can show how my fingers are working. So is this in Japan, or do you do it here in well, England as well? Both, both, both right. yes. But um, it is easier for me to arrange when I'm in Japan. Sure. Yes. And uh, but anyway, so that that's that. And then uh, uh, I play something they know, so that they can hear the difference. And it's amazing when I do students' concerts or primary school concerts, children's concerts. They always come up with amazing questions, very musical, yes, yes quite threatening. <laughs> Some of them almost professional level questions, and they always amaze me. So it, it's a it's a very um, stimulating for me. Okay, yes, yeah. I'm sure I've already met future pianists, future musicians, and future audience. I am sure I have met them already. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And another outreach that I do really passionately is um, it's called Jamie's Concert. That's that's my creation kind of thing. And um, when I was when I first started uh, playing professionally in the UK, I was a lodger with an English uh, family, musician's family, and uh, there was a, a, a very disabled child in that family. And then I realized what it was like to to live with. Um, those children, because for 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 the parents, it's, it's very very demanding. So I started this thing called Jamie's concert, and the Jamie is the name of the, the, the this boy, and uh, it's designed for mainly for the carers, so that they can go to concerts during the day while children are in school, and they can go home before the ch the children get home. And but the, the concert is really like professional level concert. Nothing different. We always put the dress on and, and we play in a proper concert hall. And uh, it's going really very well. I've already done 10, concert in, 10 concerts in Japan and um, I've already done two in the UK and I'm about to do the, the next one in Liverpool area next February. So um, I would really like to continue that. Yes, I, mm. I was going to say the next question. Uh, what are your plans for 2013? Oh, well, um, <laughs> It's just uh, really carrying on playing, yes, really. Of course, yeah. Yeah, and uh, recently I recorded Mozart's Sonatas, 
and uh, it is going to be released. So I'd like to play some of those um, sonatas and then see how far I can go. This is a real, real test as a pianist. That is, it is. <laughs> it's actually playing all of them, wow. Yes, it's, that's, that's going to be a, a big challenge for me. And, uh, um, well, the, the carry on learning new pieces. Yeah. Well, this year I've done this big Debussy festival and then I celebrated the year of Debussy's yeah. birthday. So next year it is a little bit quieter in that respect. I don't have any kind of big project. But um, I've got a lot of concerts coming in and people are now finding out that I've recorded Mozart. So I am getting some Mozart concerto uh, dates. So um, that's going to be very interesting too. Very good, yes. yeah. So what does playing the piano mean to you? Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, something which speaks for me. It takes a lot of training and uh, discipline. But at the end of the day, when I am at the piano, um, I cannot really cover it up myself. It just shows what I am. And um, I think that's, that's, that's what it is. Things that I cannot say when I am feeling a bit too shy or too happy or too sad, piano will say it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you.